Even with their recent slide, the Seattle Seahawks have been one of the biggest surprises of the 2022 NFL season. Most of their success has been credited to two things, their breakout star and fringe MVP candidate at quarterback in Geno Smith, and their rookie draft class that is filled with numerous starters and has the potential to be historically good. Perhaps the most notable from that class has been not the first, second, third, fourth, or even fifth player selected, but the sixth in cornerback Tariq Woolen, whom Seattle selected 153rd overall out of UTSA. The freaky athlete has been a turnover machine on defense, inspiring comparisons to another lanky corner who quickly grew into a star as a late round rookie over a decade ago for the same franchise. More on that later. But considering all this, it should have been no surprise when both Smith and Woolen were among the top two vote getters at their respective positions in the NFC. In fact, Woolen would have finished first among all cornerbacks in fan voting if not for Sauce Gardner begging fans on social media to make him number one at the last minute. But I digress. The Seahawks are already a pretty darn good football team, and with their young players like Woolen turning into superstars before our very eyes, the future in Seattle is brighter than anyone could have possibly imagined a year ago. So, you may be wondering, how did someone who was as good as I have described and who is currently second in Defensive Rookie of the Year odds last until the fifth round of the draft? Well, for one, Woolen had only played cornerback for two years of his life entering the 2022 NFL Draft. He started his career as a wide receiver at UTSA, but he only collected 24 receptions over his first 16 games. He transitioned to cornerback ahead of his redshirt junior season in 2020 as a new coaching staff was brought in. They were enamored with his absurd size and speed. And can you blame them? I mean, just look at his measurables from the combine. The dude is bigger than pretty much every other corner in the NFL, standing at an imposing 6'4", 205 pounds. His 4 yard dash was the fifth fastest time in NFL combine history. That speed is ludicrous for anybody, but unheard of for someone his size. His 42-inch vertical jump graded out in the 97th percentile among cornerbacks. In fact, Woolen came out in the 90th percentile or better at his position every single thing he was measured at during the combine, except for hand size. These are height, weight, speed measurables that scouts salivate over. And yet every team, including the Seahawks, passed him over at least four times each. Common knocks against Woolen given were his lack of experience and production, obviously, along with concerns about his tackling ability and hip flexibility. So far this season, those concern areas have either not been an issue whatsoever, or Woolen has shown solid strides in them. Finally, a concern area that scouts brought up often was Woolen's personality. He told The Athletic that teams told him he was quote, too laid back and a goofy person. That's obviously a pretty laughable thing to say, but Seahawks defensive coordinator Clint Hurt pointed out that a laid back personality is not always a negative, saying that Woolen's nonchalant nature helps him stay calm when the ball is in the air, whereas many other corners may panic and make things worse. Regardless of how valid or invalid these concerns were, however, it still is a bit inexplicable that Woolen lasted until the 153rd pick, right? He is currently performing like a minimum top 10 cornerback in the entire NFL right now, and yet just 8 months ago 20 other corners were selected ahead of him in his own draft class. Surely you'd think some team would take a shot on him in the 2nd or 3rd just because of his sheer athleticism, right? Well, regardless, I'm sure Pete Carroll and the Seahawks are happy with how things played out, and Woolen is likely just as pleased because there may have not been a more perfect fit between player and team in this year's class. Ever since Pete Carroll arrived in Seattle in 2010, one of his biggest focuses has been acquiring freaky athlete types, specifically at cornerback where they famously must meet the 32 inch arm length threshold. The Legion of Boom was born in 2011 when the Seahawks acquired two new starting corners, Richard Sherman and Brandon Browner. The latter went undrafted in 2005 and spent the next five years in the CFL, but he stood at an imposing 6-4-2-20, so Seattle gave him a call and he instantly became a pro bowler in his first NFL season. Sherman, standing at 6-3-205, was drafted in the fifth round like Wool and one slot later at 154th. Over the years, many lengthy corners turned in and out, but Sherman was the one constant. He made four pro bowls and three first-team all-pros in Seattle on his way to a first ballot Hall of Fame career. Even without he left Seattle on unceremonious terms to go to their rival, he is still viewed as a legend in the area, and he still roots for them to do well. So it's no surprise that many Seattle fans and people in the media have jumped to that comparison. Like Woolen, Sherman only played two years as a corner in college after transitioning from receiver. And like Woolen, despite falling to the fifth round, Sherman became a high-quality starter pretty quickly. 
He intercepted four passes as a rookie and was a top 10 corner by PFF grading. Sherman himself has even addressed the comparison, saying, quote, He's lived up to it, man. He's been a great player. He's been confident. He's taken advantage of his ops when they're there. He had all the tools, but a lot of people have all the tools and can't put it together on game day. It's cool to see somebody living up to his potential. And he's right. We have seen these physical freaks fail plenty before. Obi Melifonwu was 6'4", 224, ran a 4'4", 40, and had a vertical jump of 44 inches. And he washed out of the league after just 7 games played. You have to have more than just the tools. And it's clear that Woolen is more than that, and he will have a brighter fate. But on the other end of the spectrum, while the similarities are there and being compared to a future Hall of Famer is never an insult, why are we, including myself with my clickbait title, trying to put Woolen into a box by calling him the next Richard Sherman? Why can't he be his own player? Sherman had the great length that Woolen does, but he did not have his speed as he ran just a 4540. I don't mean to jump the gun because a lot can happen, but Woolen truly has unlimited potential when you combine those next level traits with a system like Seattle's where he can flourish. If he can fine tune his technique to get even somewhat close to Sherman's, the league will officially be on lookout. Woolen's ludicrous athleticism was arguably most prominently displayed this year on a 60 yard touchdown run by the opposing quarterback, ironically enough. Against the Saints, Woolen was knocked out of the play shortly after the snap by the pulling right guard. By the time he gathered himself and got into a sprinting position to chase down Taysom Hill, who already had a full head of steam, Woolen was a good 5 yards behind the quarterback, not to mention also behind 3 other Seahawks who were trailing Hill. But from here, man, just look at that absurd acceleration. It's like when you slow down every other player in Madden and make your character 99 at everything. Sure, you can say that Hill was winded and slower thanks to carrying the ball, but Woolen also sped past other Seahawks DBs who had a head start on him. Hill wound up scoring because Woolen understandably went for the ball instead of the tackle in a close game down the stretch, but the play was impressive nonetheless. Per Next Gen Stats, Woolen reached a top speed of 22.93 miles per hour in his pursuit of Hill, which was the fastest speed tracked for any player in over two full years. Seahawks defensive coordinator Clint Hurt nicknamed Woolen Avatar in training camp for obvious reasons, and it is perhaps the most fitting nickname in football aside from the fact that Woolen is actually entertaining to watch. He showcased just why against the Chiefs in Week 16. The likely MVP Patrick Mahomes shied away from Woolen all day, but decided to try him one time on a deep ball, and it did not go as planned. After allowing Justin Watson to get behind him on a go ball, Woolen displayed his incredible closing speed, making up ground to break up the pass at the last minute. The only surprise here was that Woolen didn't come down with the interception. As Seahawks safety Quandre Diggs put it, Woolen is quite simply unfair. He's special. I mean, he's 6'4 and runs a 4'2. I mean, he's, he's a cheat code. Mahomes understandably did not look Woolen's way again all game. It was Woolen's fifth time this season allowing fewer than 20 yards in his coverage. While Woolen was mostly a shutdown corner against KC, he has drawn such fame this season because of his ball hawking nature. He is tied for the league lead in interceptions with three other players with six apiece. If that holds up, he'd be the first rookie to lead the league in that category since Marcus Peters did so in 2015. When it comes to strictly corners, however, only two other players have even five picks this season. He's also held up well when the Seahawks have left him on an island. Five of his six picks have come while in single coverage, once again, tops in the league. He's played 174 single coverage snaps and given up just a 53.4 passer rating. He was the first player to record four picks in his first six games since Kiko Alonso did so in 2013, and he's one of just 15 players to do so all time. When he recorded his fifth interception in his 10th career game, he became just the third player to do so since 2010. And when he recorded his sixth interception, he broke a tie with Earl Thomas and Michael Bulware for most picks by a Seahawks rookie. Through 17 weeks, Woolen has a combined 17 interceptions and forced incompletions. Only James Bradbury and Sauce Gardner have more in the NFL. He's not getting all layup interceptions either. The pick against New Orleans was especially impressive. He's got his eyes on the quarterback the entire way, and look at how he plants his feet into the ground and breaks on the ball as soon as he sees that it is released. Even Pete Carroll was impressed, saying, When a corner's out there playing by, by himself, in essence, whether it's three deep or man-to-man, -man, his, first, his first responsibility is to cover the deep ball. And if there was a coverage that you could call that a corner could cover the deep ball and stop out routes, you'd call it every snap. <laughs> okay, that doesn't exist because you got to take, take the deep ball, you got to stay on top. And to stay on top means that you're going to, they're going to be able to 
first off line of scrimmage and break back. So to be able to cover the deep ball, which he was in position to do that, and come back and, and have the rhythm and the, and the, the sense uh, to, to jump that route too, that's, that's a big deal. Because he was, it wasn't like he lucked out. It wasn't like he guessed. He just played the route and was on it, and then it got his foot in the ground and got back, and then made a terrific catch with the guy, you know, contesting it. Woolen's wide receiver background also clearly benefits him in his corner role. On his first career pick six in Week Four against the Lions, look at his burst at the top of the route. He breaks on the ball as soon as tight end T.J. Hawkinson makes his cut inside, snags the ball cleanly out of the air, and finishes the play with some nifty after the catch skills. That burst and ability to finish is rare for a corner. Because of his history as a receiver, he recognizes plays and routes faster than an ordinary corner would. While in zone coverage versus the Falcons, Woolen notices Drake London breaking down for a curl and instantly jumps the route. So his receiver background helps him have a keen eye, great hands, and a quick burst. And as I alluded to before, it's not just the interceptions that gather all the headlines either. His 18.2 force and completion rate is 8th among corners with 300 plus snaps. He's simply a playmaker, even when he doesn't come down with the ball in his hands. One last play to showcase Woolen's skills, one that probably still angers the corner to this day. In a cover 3 zone against Carolina, he's playing everything deep and keeping his eyes on the quarterback the entire way. He's not even worried about the receiver on his side. Even if the ball were to go his way, with Woolen's speed he'd likely be able to break and make a play on the ball. Instead, he notices the slot receiver run past Kobe Bryant down the seam and sprints over to knock the pass away, making up crazy ground in the process. I just know he's kicking himself to this day for not holding on to it though. Woolen's athleticism is obvious from first glance, but his intelligence is nearly as impressive. But even with all this praise, no player is perfect. Fans have to have something to look forward to, so where can Woolen improve in his second year? Well, to take it back to the comparison that I started this video with, like Sherman, Woolen has struggled a bit with penalties in his rookie season. Through 16 weeks, a flag has been thrown on Woolen 8 times, which is tied for the third most among corners. 2 pass interference penalties, 3 holding infractions, 1 instance of legal hand usage, 1 face mask, and 1 offsides. Sherman famously committed a lot of penalties early on, but learned subtle ways with his technique to get away with what had earlier been obvious calls. Just cleaning up those little technical areas of his game will go a long way for Woolen's development. And in his defense, two of those penalties occurred in the opener, and six of them happened in the first five weeks, so he has already improved a bit as the season has gone on. Just take a look at the disparity in Woolen's PFF grades. In your standard PFF grading, Woolen ranks 23rd among cornerbacks with a 71.3 grade and 11th in coverage grades with a mark of 77.3. But when you exclude plays where there is no play due to an accepted penalty, those numbers jump up to a 78.6 PFF grade, 13th in the league, and his coverage grade leaps all the way up to 85.7, second in the league behind only Sauce Gardner. I've frankly never seen anything like that. His other weakness has been tackling, but with the caveat that he has shown some positive strides as the season has gone on. He's not one of those soft corners who avoids contact. His lapses come from sometimes poor form, which makes sense given his background, but he is no stranger to contact. He got eaten alive against the Panthers, but responded greatly the following Thursday versus San Francisco. He'll often take it upon himself to blow up oncoming run blockers, like he did here, and sometimes that initiative is rewarded with also taking down the ball carrier in the process. But sometimes you're rewarded with poor tackling by your teammates, as Woolen was here when he perfectly executed blowing up the blocker on a bubble screen, only to see the receiver still gain positive yardage. Earlier in the season after the Rams matchup, team captain Quandre Diggs praised Woolen's improved tackling, saying, I mean, the thing that I was more impressed with was just, you know, his tackling today. You know, he was physical, you know, and, um... The picks and, you know, all that is cool, but you don't want to be labeled as a cover corner. You know, you want to be somebody that has an all-around game. And um, I think that was what was more impressive, you know, than interception. We know he can do that. You know, we know he can play man. You know, he can, you know, um, get past breakups. But, you know, team's going to try him in the run game. And he took that step today, which is very cool for me to see. Woolen's teammates and coaches have heaped praise on him all season long. After Woolen recorded an interception in his fourth straight game in Week 6, Diggs had this to say about the rookie. I mean, I, I just, I don't understand why you would try a 6'4 corner and runs a 4'2 on a goal ball. Like, it's like, 
even if you try to throw a perfect ball, he's going to be right there because he's so tall, his arms are so long. Like, I mean, it's, he's phenomenal, you know what I mean? So um, he's just, he's learned the game each and every week, and I don't even think he understands what he's doing right now. After that same game, head coach Pete Carroll said, I, I don't I don't remember feeling like this about a, a you know young corner out there that goes week after week after week coming from where he came from and all that um, and to be this far along and having this much fun and success and all that um, it's really fun to watch which coming from Carroll that means a lot considering who he's coached it didn't take running back DJ Dallas long to become confident in Woolen's skills either quote when the ball went up I knew it was a pick that's not a person you try even if he's a rookie you don't try him He's the biggest DB on the freaking field and you try him? Fastest DB on the field and you try him? Okay, cool. Linebacker Jordan Brooks isn't sweating it though, saying quote, I hope they keep trying him. We'll keep getting the picks. But the fact is, teams have begun to shy away from Woolen, as we saw against Kansas City. They're learning how much of a menace he is. Over his five games from week 12 to week 16, Woolen was only targeted 10 times, whereas that number was 25 over his previous five games. This season, Woolen has exhibited traits of a ball hawking corner like last year's leading Pro Bowl vote getter Trayvon Diggs, and of a shutdown maestro like this year's leading Pro Bowl vote getter in Sauce Gardner. Only the elite players are able to match both of those abilities. One of the most famous to be able to do so, Seahawks legend Richard Sherman. See, it all comes around in the end. But again, nobody in the position's history has been able to display those traits while also being as big and as fast as he is. If he can perform up to his capabilities, it will be the likes of which the league has never seen. Seahawks defensive lineman Quentin Jefferson has already seen enough to take it a step further, saying, quote, I'm going to call it now. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. He's a walking gold jacket. While it remains to be seen just how high Woolen can climb, the fact that people are talking about him like this just a few months after he was drafted speaks volumes. Just eight months ago, 20 other cornerbacks were selected ahead of him in the NFL draft. Now, only one player at the position in the entire league received more Pro Bowl votes than him. Tariq Woolen's rise to stardom has been immaculate to watch, and this is only the beginning. Hey, bro, why, why are they trying to make us beat for no reason? I don't know, bro. Bro. No cow. But I respect it, though. Let's keep going. We the future, bro. No cow. It's hard for two people like this to do it. And it's two long ones. We just setting the standard for everybody else that's coming, bro. But no cow. Hey, so we're going to take this to another level. And anytime we lean, it's going to be great competition. So, hell yeah, much love, much respect. Happy New Year's. I'm, I'm going to get contact with you for sure.